Wolf and the Lamb Once upon a time a wolf was lapping at a spring on a hillside when, looking up, what should he see but a lamb just beginning to drink a little lower down. There's my supper thought he, if only I find some excuse to seize it. Then he called out to the lamb, how dare you muddle the water I am drinking. Nay, master nay. Said the lambkin, if the water water be muddy up there, I cannot be cause of it, for it runs down from you to me. Well, then, said the wolf, why did you call me bad names this time last year, that cannot be, said the lamb, I am only six months old. I don't care snarled the wolf, if it was not you, it was your father and with that he rushed upon the poor little lamb. Morale of the story. Any excuse will serve a tyrant. The Dog and the Shadow It happened that a dog had got a piece of meat and carrying it home in his mouth to eat in peace. Now on his way home, he had to cross a plank lying across the running brook. As he crossed, he looked down and saw his own shadow reflecting in the water beneath. Thinking it was another dog with another piece of meat, he made up his mind to have that also. So he made a snap at the shadow in the water, but as he opened his mouth, the piece of meat fell out, dropped into the water and was never seen again. Morale of the story, be aware lest you lose the substance by grasping at the shadow. The Lion's Share The lion once went hunting with the fox, the jackal, and the wolf. They hunted and hunted till at last they surprised a stag, and soon took its life. Then came the question how the spoil should be divided. Quarter me this stag, roared the lion. So the other animals skinned it and cut it into four parts. Then the lion took his stand in front of the caracas and pronounced judgment. The first quarter is for me in my capacity as king of beasts. The second in mine as arbiter. Another share comes to me for my part in the chase. And as for the fourth quarter, well as for that, I should like to see which of you will dare to lay paw upon it. Humph grumbled the fox as he walked away with his tail between his legs, but he spoke in a low growl. You may share the labors of the great, but you will not share the rewards. Aesop's Fable Narrated to you by Tan Verhasen The Wolf and the Crane A wolf had been gorging on an animal he had killed, when suddenly a small bone in the meat stuck in his throat and he could not swallow it. He soon felt terrible pain in his throat and ran up and down groaning and groaning and seeking for something to relieve the pain. He tried to induce everyone he met to remove the bone. I would give anything, said he, if you would take it out. At last the crane agreed to try, and told the wolf to lie on his side and open his jaws as wide as he could. Then the crane put its long neck down the wolf's throat, and with its beak loosened the bone till at last it got it out. Will you kindly give me the reward you promised? 
said the crane. The wolf grinned and showed his teeth and said be content. You have put your head inside a wolf's mouth and taken it out again in safety. That ought to be the reward for you. Morale of the story is. Gratitude and greed do not go together. The Man and the Serpent A countryman's son, by accident, trod upon a serpent's tail, which turned and bit him, so that he died. The father in a rage, got his axe, and pursuing the serpent, cut part of its tail. So the serpent in revenge, began to stinging several of the farmer's cattle, and caused him severe loss. Well, the farmer thought it best, to make it up with the serpent and brought food and honey to the mouth of its lair, and said to it, Let's forget and forgive. Perhaps you were right to punish my son and take vengeance on my cattle. But surely I was right in trying to revenge him. Now that we are both satisfied, why can't we be friends again? No, no, said the serpent. Take away your gifts. You can never forget the death of your son nor I the loss of my tail. Morale of the story is. Injuries may be forgiven, but not forgotten. A town mouse once upon a time went on a visit to his cousin in the village. He was rough and ready, this cousin but he loved his town friend and made him heartily welcome. Beans and bacon, cheese and bread, were all he had to offer them freely. The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this village guy and said, I cannot understand, cousin, how you can put up with such poor food as this, but of course you cannot expect anything better in the village. Come home with me and I will show you how to live. When you have been in town a week you will wonder how you could ever have stood a village life. No sooner said than done, the two mice set off for the town and arrived at the town mouse's residence late at night. You will want some refreshments after our long journey said the polite town mouse, and took his friend into the grand dining room. There they found the remnants of the affine feast, and soon the two mice were eating up jellies and cakes and all that was nice. Suddenly they heard growling and barking. What was that? Asked the village mouse. It's only the dogs of the house, answered the other. Only, said the village mouse. I do not like that music at my dinner. Just at that moment the dyer flew open and in came two huge dogs, and the two mice had to scamper down and run off. Goodbye cousin, said the village mouse. What, asked the other. He replied, better beans and bacon in peace than cakes and jelly in the fear. Morale of the story is. Better beans and bacon in peace. Then cakes and jelly in fear. The Fox and the Crow A fox saw a crow fly off with a piece of cheese in its beak and settle on a branch of a tree. That's for me, said the fox. And he walked up to the foot of the tree. Good day, beautiful crow. He cried. How well you are looking today. How glossy your feathers are. How bright your eyes. I feel sure, your voice must surpass that of other birds. Just as your figure does. Let me hear a song from you that I may greet you as the queen of birds. The crow lifted up her head. And began to sing her best. But the moment she opened her mouth the piece of cheese fell to the ground. Only to be snapped up by the fox. That will do, said the fox. That's what I wanted. In exchange for your cheese, I will give you a piece of advice for the future. Do not trust flatterers.
A sick lion. A lion had come to the end of his days, and lay sick unto death at the mouth of his cave, gasping for breath. The animals, his subjects, came round him and drew nearer as he grew more and more helpless. When they saw him on the point of death, they thought to themselves, Now is the time to pay off old grudges. So the boar came up and drove at him with his tusks. Then a bull gored him with his horns. Still the lion lay helpless before them. So the ass, feeling quite safe from danger, came up, and turning his tail to the lion kicked up his heels into the lion. This is a double death, growled the lion. Morale of the story is. Only cowards insult dying majesty. The Lion and the Mouse Once, when a lion was asleep, a little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion, who placed his huge paw upon the mouse and opened his big jaws to swallow him. Pardon me, O oh, king, cried the little mouse. Forgive me this time, I shall never forget it. I may be able to return this favor one day. The lion was so tickled at the idea of the mouse being able to help him, that he lifted up his paw and let him go. Some time later, the lion was caught in a trap, and the hunters, who desired to carry him alive to the king, tied him to the tree, while they went in search of Awagon to carry him on. Just then the little mouse happened to pass by, and seeing the sad plight of the lion, went up to him, and soon gnawed away the ropes that bound the king of the beasts. Was I not right, said the lit mouse. Morale of the story is, little friends may prove great friends. <laughs>